Hello, my name is Mjeka Salvi del Pero. I work at UCD where I lead the work on the ethical implications of AI in the workplace. Today, I would like to present the main finding uh, of our work on this topic uh, based on a recent report which, uh, that we just published. So let me start by saying that comparable evidence on the use of AI systems in the workplace is still scant, and UCD is doing a lot of work uh, on this right now. Uh, in the meanwhile, the evidence we found suggests that the use of AI in the workplace is growing. Uh, for example, the 2019 Garner surveys uh, found that 17% of the organizations use AI solution in their HR function. The literature finds that many benefits um, uh, arise from the use of AI in the workplace. It can complement and augment human capabilities, it increases productivity and the demand for human labor uh, in certain jobs. Um, it can also improve worker safety and reduce um, the amount of um, tedious tasks that workers need to do at work. But there are also a number of risks including ethical concerns that arise, that arise when uh, AI is used in the workplace. As um, shown in this slide, uh, a BC Gamma survey uh, finds that 60%, 65% of workers fear that AI might dehumanize their work, and 64% of them uh, fear that AI will pose problems in terms of uh, protection of their personal data. Um, to look into what are the main ethical risks uh, when uh, we want to make uh, the use of AI trustworthy, we've identified four main core dimensions of trustworthiness, trustworthiness of AI in the workplace. First, human rights, which include privacy, fairness, agency, and dignity. Second, transparency and explainability. Third, robust and security and safety. And fourth, accountability. Um, I will go into a bit more detail for each one of these, but first let me say that these um, dimensions of trustworthiness are based on the OECD principles for responsible stewardship of trustworthy AI, um, to which more than 40 countries have adhered since its adoption in 2019. So if we start with the first dimension of trustworthiness, human rights, um, this includes privacy, fairness, and agency. Um, the deployment of predictive models and the processing of uh, structured and uh, richer data has transformed the nature of workers' monitoring, posing risks for their privacy. The use of remote surveillance software has increased exponentially during the COVID um, crisis when telework became much more uh, common. Uh, there is uh, software that captures uh, frequent live uh, photos of workers from the laptop, um, and some companies have been found to monitor workers' activity also on social media uh, or their location outside working hours to discourage collective action. The second risk that we see for human rights is a possible loss of autonomy. Systematic management through AI systems can reduce the ability of workers to decide on how to do certain tasks that are assigned to them and their agency in them. And so ultimately this will reduce their creativity and innovation uh, besides making them feel less worthy. Uh, for example, when using AI um, for uh, medical diagnosis, doctors are often um, face pressure to follow the, the, the advice of the system. Instances of bias and discrimination in AI systems have been also widely reported. In principle, um, using AI to formalize um, rules for management processes make decision more objective and therefore would reduce discrimination. But um, in fact, AI systems struggle with bias. Um, there is bias um, in uh, who can see job postings, bias in how algorithms rank uh, job applicants, and bias um, in facial recognition system that are used to authenticate workers or even to assess the performance in some interviews. Um, bias can happen both at the data level or at the input level um, due to um, historical data that are biased uh, or no representative samples or incomplete and outdated um, data. 
Um, and there is also bias at the system level through the choices that are made uh, when AI systems are designed. Overall, compared to biases um, in, uh, in human-led decisions, biased AI systems are likely to systematize existing biases. So this is the real risk that the same bias is applied over and over and is therefore reinforced in the, in the labor market. Um, the second core dimension of trustworthiness, uh, trustworthiness resolves around transparency and explainability. Workers are not always aware they're being hired, monitored, or managed um, by AI. And job applicants, for example, are not necessarily informed that their application material is being screened by algorithms. In the US, some employees who refuse to take part in AI-led wellness programs in their workplace have faced termination of their employee provide, employer provided health insurance. Um, and even if employers are supposed to obtain employees' consent for the use of their personal data, it can be very difficult for workers to deny such consent. Um, the second dimension I want to, uh, to mention is uh, explainability. The outcomes of many AI systems are very difficult to explain, especially for off-the-shelf AI systems, um, which offer less control over the design, development, and application of the system itself. Um, explainability does not mean uh, giving an explanation of the full AI decision-making process, but rather being able to give interpretable information about determinant factors that led to a certain recommendation or decision. Um, the lack of explainability also hinders the ability to challenge an outcome for workers. This especially is true for platform workers um, who uh, were not able sometimes to obtain explanations on how deliveries were assigned to some of them and why some of them were removed from, from the platform itself. Moving um, to the third dimension of trustworthiness, um, we look at robustness and safety. There are multiple examples of AI that help keep workers safe, but AI can also lead to excessive work intensification uh, as reported in some warehouses or can expose um, to more severe um, consequences when um, there is a breach of data. Um, looking finally at accountability, it is difficult um, to decide who is legally responsible if something goes wrong when AI, AI systems are used in the workplace. Is it the programmers, is it the developers or the employers? In the workplace, if developers and designers are not involved, more responsibility will shift to employers. Approaches to improve accountability in the workplace include uh, doing audits and having a human in the loop to approve decisions or predictions made by AI system before they are actually implemented. Um, so our work then looks at the policy response that countries have been using. Um, and we find that um, the policies are actually um, span across a broad range of tools um, from self and co-regulation to the application of existing policies and regulation to the development of new AI specific policies. Let's start with existing legislation. Um, this is the legislation that uh, while not being AI specific is relevant to us when AI systems are used in the workplace. Uh, the first um, example I mentioned is um, anti-discrimination laws. These laws are applicable to hiring through AI systems. Um, the emerging evidence is that um, even if um, the existing legal framework is strong, enforcing it when AI systems are used can be challenging, especially if attempts to redress uh, need to be initiated by the worker or individual applicants. Um, secondly, I want to mention data protection legislation. In Europe, the GDPR, for example, enshrines rights such as the right to transparent information, the right of access, uh, or the right to rectification, um, which can address some of the concerns that I mentioned above. And finally, among relevant existing legislation, uh, let me mention consumer protection legislation, which is also being used. 
this happened, for example, when um, employers who bought AI hiring system that were marketed as objective uh, or actually more objective than humans um, appear to instead produce more discriminatory outcomes. Um, the second big category of relevant policies is whole of government policy efforts have implications for use of AI in the workplace. One of the most discussed at the moment is the UI Act, which proposes a regulation based on um, categorization of risks which range from minimal to unacceptable. Some of the workplace systems uh, may have elements of unacceptable risk and would therefore be banned. But generally, AI systems used in the workplace would, consider, would be considered high risk. And so they would be subjected to data protection, transparency, human oversight, among other things. We also have on our radar the US Algorithmic Accountability Act, which would introduce mandatory impact assessment uh, for, for these tools. But the bill has not made significant progress uh, since being presented in 2019. Um, since we published the paper, um, relevant policies are also being released in Canada and are being developed in the UK. Um, the third and final category of policies um, that um, are those that are specific um, to the use of AI systems in the workplace. Uh, these are still quite rare, uh, but we have a number of interesting cases. In Illinois, for example, uh, workers need to inform candidates about the use of AI system in video interviews for recruitment. And Maryland bans the use of facial recognition in interviews for employment without consent. New York City Council is banning automated employment decision tools without annual, annual bias audits. And in Spain, thanks to legislation linked to a collective bargaining agreement, Platforms have to provide workers' representatives with information on the algorithmic formula used to determine working conditions. Overall, these policies are very important developments, but um, they also show the need uh, for better informants. enforcement. For example, the Illinois law is unclear on what kind of explanation need to be given to candidates or what happens if a candidate refuses to be analyzed in this way. And the New York City Council law uh, leaves potential for vendor-sponsored uh, audits to rubber stamp their own technologies. Overall, um, I would conclude by saying that we still that we see a strong need for policy and guidance to ensure trustworthy AI in the workplace. There are many opportunities that um, AI can bring if we address these risks and make um, AI trustworthy. So um, with this, I will end. Uh, let me thank you very much for your attention. Um, please do look our work up um, um, on our website and especially the forthcoming um, OECD International Conference that we will have on this topic in March 2023. Thank you very much.